Good morning, Church. Thank you for joining us here today for today's broadcast. We just want to invite you to stand wherever you are right now and just put your hands together even as you worship our God. Let's go. There's anointing. There's anointing in the air. I can feel it everywhere. I've got the power in my soul. So let the river flow. Can you hear the rushing wind? It's blowing deep within. My spirit is alive. My life has been revived. I've got the joy. Just Lord, fill us, Lord, with your presence. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we want a piece of you. Yes, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare your
tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone, your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit. glory, God is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here, come flood this place and fill the atmosphere, your glory. overtakes us and overcomes us 
we yield ourselves to you. Let our hands do your work. Let our mind think your words. Let our heart be as your heart. Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will come upon us and transform us, embolden us, strengthen us, and empower us, that we may do the work of the Lord, that we may do the work of the kingdom. We yield ourselves to you. and the off-screen worship team for leading us in the time of worship. Bringing us the word this week is a retired headmistress and teacher. She studies and teaches the word of God with great passion. Let's welcome Deaconess Debbie as she brings the message, Travelling Light in the Light. Good morning to everyone, online, near and far. I like this picture of the runner running towards the light. It illustrates my title, Travelling Light in the Light. 
The runner is certainly travelling light. He doesn't carry any bags on him. He's also slim like Mr. Go Xianghua with no extra weight. He is running in the early light of the morning sun so that he can see his running path clearly and run without tripping on unseen obstacles in the forest. So the two parts of the title, Travelling Light being the first part and the second part being Travelling in the Light. One of my favourite authors, Max Lucado, wrote a book entitled Travelling Light. I have invited someone from TOD who has a rich voice to read Max Lucado opening words. Let's listen as Benjamin Yao reads for us. Enjoy. Weary travellers, you've seen them. Everything they own crammed into their luggage. Staggering through terminals and hotel lobbies with overstuffed suitcases, trunks, duffels, and backpacks. Backs ache, feet burn, eyelids droop. We've all seen people like that. At times, we are people like that. If not with our physical luggage, then at least with our spiritual load. We all lug loads we were never intended to carry. Fear, worry, discontent. No wonder we get so weary. We are worn out from carrying that excess baggage. Wouldn't it be nice to drop some of those bags? May God use this message to remind you to release the burdens you were never meant to bear. Thank you, Benjamin, for the wonderful reading. You have begun as well on this first portion, Travelling Light. I will use the scripture, Hebrews 12, verse 1, in NKJV version. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. I enjoy reading and comparing different versions of the Bible. The table in the slide shows different translation of the Bible. The first line, first part, let us lay aside every weight, is rephrased. So let go of every wound that has pierced us. It is also rephrased, strip down, no extra spiritual fat. The part B, let us run with endurance, the race that is set before us, is rephrased, run life marathon race. It is also translated as path which has been already marked out before us. It is also used as contest. So summarizing the different version. We need to basically travel light because it is a long, difficult race and we need to endure to the end and not give up halfway. It is a long journey for us ahead from now until heaven. We do not want to drop out prematurely. We want to complete our race. At funerals, often 2 Timothy 4.7 is read, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So, traveling like, personally for me, it is difficult. Just like many ladies and some men, I like to travel with all my stuff. There is only one trip in my memory that I really tried to travel light. Have you seen this picture on the Malaysian $100 ringgit? On the back side, you would see the more famous Mount Kinabalu silhouette and the less fa uh, famous but very jagged uh, peaks here. Do you know where this jagged peaks pinnacle is? This is the not so famous in Sarawak. It is called the Mulu Pinnacles. Mulu Pinnacles is in a UNESCO heritage uh, park. 
Okay, to reach to the base camp to climb the Mulu Pinnacles, first you fly in a little plane. Then you travel upstream in a long narrow boat for at least one hour. At some point, when the water is too shallow, you have to get up and walk. Our boat ride from one hour became 2.5 hours. So you see, that alone will deter you from bringing extra weight because the more weight you have, the more walking you have to do. And from the point where the boat stopped, we have to walk 8.8 km to the base camp. You know, normal day to walk 8.8 km, so we have to think twice. Okay, All right. Thank God Jason and Peter helped to carry our bags. And then the climb up. We were informed by our guide that usually 4 out of 10 people who attempt Mulu Pinnacles okay, reach it. And 6 out of the 10 do not. Since I'm the heaviest person on the trip, the oldest female, I fall in the six that shouldn't reach it. So the odds were stacked against me. So I was very focused. Okay, I must travel very light. So I got more chance of making it up to the pinnacles. I was most afraid that if I could not reach the cutoff point by 10.30 a.m., they don't allow you up anymore. So I asked Peter, Peter, can we start off as early as possible? Okay, so that at least I got more chance lah, of reaching to attempt the climb. I was very focused to travel light for this arduous climb because of the steep gradient and we packed only a change of clothes, towels and we asked to pack 3 litres of water which is quite heavy and a lunch bag. But we hid our heavy water bottles, those that we don't need for the return trip halfway so that we don't have to carry it up the difficult path. Okay, that is the Molo Pinnacles. But we often don't realise our journey as a Christian can be more difficult uh, compared to Mulu Pinnacles. It also has spiritual oppression. We like to think of life as a pleasant nature walk in the park. We bring picnic basket, hamper basket and also yummy food and drink. Okay, And then when we get fatigued and weary, we question God. Why? Why so susah? Why so difficult? But what does God say? Strip away all weights, travel light. Don't carry so much so that you can complete the race and not drop out prematurely. In Matthew 7 verse 13 to 14, Jesus himself said, Go in through the narrow gate, for narrow is the gate that leads to the destruction, and broad is the road. Okay. Narrow is a gate that leads to life, sorry. It is a narrow gate and a hard road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Jesus said this as an answer to a question in Luke 13 verse 23. Consider intentionally what weights you can put off. MCO has forced us to strip down to bare basics, to levels we never imagined possible in the pre-MCO days. We have learned to survive without trips to the hair salute. We no longer eat out. We do not have social visits. We now have Zoom birthday parties. We have many work permanently from home while dodging the kids. Pre-MCO, if you had suggested that we can survive this, we would laugh you out. If there's one thing MCO has proven, it has proven we can adjust when we need to. And why do we adjust? Because to all these our earthly comforts, why do we bother adjust? Because we want to preserve our earthly life. And not just that of our own, but also that of our family. If we have that potential to strip down to essential for earthly life, surely we have the potential to strip down the bare essential for eternal life, which is more precious and more imperishable than earthly life. Back to my Mulu Pinnacle story. Normally people start hiking on Mulu Pinnacles at 7.30 when there's enough daylight. Daylight is very important because of the sharp rocks. But because I was so slow, I asked Peter, can we start earlier? And they gave us permission, provided we wear headlamps. Okay, so we started at 6, 10 a.m. Okay, it's very important, absolutely vital to travel in the light on Molo Pinnacles. If you slip, you trip, 
you cut yourself against so sharp rocks. There are so many big and small sharp rocks. You can bleed. It's very dangerous. So you need to travel in the light and not and avoid all these kind of things that can make you trip. Okay? Right. This part, traveling in the light, what does it mean? I did a search on verses uh, in the Bible using my electronic uh, concordance, using that phrase, in the light. 99 verses pop up. I found many verses in First John, okay, the epistle of First John, and which I helped me understand the biblical perspective of traveling in the light. First John 1 7, it says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. First John 2, verse 7 to 9 say, If anyone who claims to be in this light while hating his brother is still in the dark, the person who keeps loving his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him that could make him trip complete Jewish Bible version. My understanding as I read the epistles of John was that travelling in the light means to have real fellowship with each other and we take care not to make others trip as we walk. In Genesis 1 and 2, during the story of creation, God says six times of his creation, it is good. And then he said it is not good. And then he said it is very good. Do you remember when God said it is not good? The verse is Genesis 2.18. He said it is not good that man should be alone. I'm not talking of marriage today, although this would be a good text for a wedding sermon. Rather, I am talking that from the beginning of time in Genesis, God intended men to have fellowship with him and to have fellowship with other, uh, each other. So to travel in the light means to travel with God as your light and to travel alongside others on our journey to our eternal destination. Mona Jernian's song, okay, The Glorified Christ, was the inspiration for this phrase, Travelling in the Light. The song was playing in my heart for a few weeks, but I couldn't find it on the internet. So I asked him to help me find the lyrics. And when she sent me the lyrics, I looked at the first two lines, and I said, wow. The first two lines say, his eyes are aflame, his face like the sun. I said, there's so much light. And yes, I understand. God wants me to speak on traveling in the light. Majestic and 
I remember that morning, I wanted to Google pictures to illustrate this phrase. His face is like the sun. I wasn't satisfied with the pictures I Googled, but I just left it. But that the night, day that I searched for the pictures was the day of the sun hello, 3rd of August. And many WhatsApp groups sent pictures to each other of their beautiful hellos around the sun. But I sent my unsuccessful post photos of the hello around the sun. But to my surprise, Joanne circled one picture for me. And she asked me, do you see the man in your photo? Huh? Man? Got man, man? Oh, I really, when I look at the photograph, oh, yes, this is his face like the sun illustrated for me in my own photograph. I don't have to search for internet picture. And again, there was that confirmation that God wanted me to speak on this. So his face, like the sun, traveling in the light. You know, I was really so excited getting that affirmation. What is Mona Jonian focus in her song? Who is her light? Clearly, it is the man, the glorified Christ, whose eyes are aflame, whose face is like the sun. He's full of light. What is her life? What is her ultimate goal? Look at the chorus of her song. Chorus you keep repeating. Until all the land shall be filled with devotion to the Lord. She wants all the land to be filled with devotion to the Lord. That can only happen when believers, when pre-believers believe in Christ. In Revelation 10 verse 1 and 7, 
you read about the man whose face is like the sun. Okay, but in verse 7, a little further, what you read is this. In the days of the sound of the seven angel, when he sounds his shofar, the hidden plan of God will be brought to completion. The good news as he proclaimed to his servants, the prophets, complete Jewish Bible. As I read this, I understood the light is to bring the mystery of the good news to all. We part to see we are to share the light of the gospel to lead people to eternal life. Then only Mona Junian's phrase, until all the land shall be filled with devotion to the Lord, can be fulfilled if we share the light of the gospel to the pre-believers around us. What was Apostle Paul's main focus throughout his the New Testament? In Romans 1.1, he introduces himself, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son. What word is repeated twice here in Romans 1? Okay, as Paul's introduction to the Romans, the answer is the gospel. Paul repeats it, the gospel of God. The gospel concerning this, his son. This is how Paul chose to introduce himself. That's how important the gospel is to Paul. You see the same theme of the importance of the gospel throughout Paul's epistle. The importance of proclaiming the gospel. Because Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Okay, 2 Timothy 1, 9 to 10, that was Ephesians 6, 19 to 20, or ask Ephesians, pray for him that he may be given words to boldly make known the mystery of the gospel without fear, and that God will open the way for him to share the good news. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, part B, whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. We read again and again through the New Testament, Paul's focus was to share the good news, to spread the light of the gospel. Some of us have just completed XEE 2.0. XEE stands for Ex evangelism explosion. Over the 10 weeks training, we learn how to share the good news in an interactive question and answer way, story style with people outside the church. We meet online, often through Zoom, through what we call connect activities, and we connect with people who have not known Christ that well. We have the great joy of leading several people to be born again and to prepare them for eternity. The time and energy we invested is well worth because people are safe for eternity. We are reaching out and we are continuing to lead some in simple Bible studies, even the pre-believers. While in life, I'm not so used to traveling light okay, and sharing the light. For the sake of the price of eternal life for others, I want to commit myself to traveling light and sharing the light of the gospel, that souls may spend eternity in God's presence. Okay, two part D. Bring your light, bring your wound up to the light. A wound that is brought up to the light heals much better than a wound kept in the dark. Our granddaughter Emma, recently she had a big cut on her forehead. Okay, Andrew and Sujen immediately asked advice from their doctor's friend and they took her to the hospital to be stitched up. A cut required so far three visits to the hospital. The healing is in progress. They took every precaution as good parents necessary for her healing. 
without permanent scars. Most people know that they need to seek medical treatment to heal a physical wound. But what about our emotional cuts and emotional wounds? Because of the shame and the pain associated with emotional cuts and wounds from relationship, although we feel the hurt, but we often we suppress the wound in deep denial. We often say to ourselves, never mind, time will heal. Does time alone heal emotional wound? Or is it that our excuse for not sitting, seeking help to heal the emotional wounds? Maybe this is one reason why we have a lot of excess emotional baggage that hampers us and weigh us down on the journey. Remember what Benjamin Yao read on the excess baggage that we need to drop baggage such as fear, worry, discontent, super sensitivity, take offense easily, jealousy. No wonder we get so weary. We are worn out from carrying the excess emo baggage. Okay, wouldn't it be nice to drop some of this baggage and to travel like hurting people hurt others? If someone has a wound and you touch their wound accidentally, they will flail their arms out and hit you. Not because they hate you, because they're afraid of more pain to their wounds. Every time something small or someone small pokes where we have wounds, we have big emotional flare up and temper out bursts. Our excess emotional baggage wear us down. It makes us irritable and flare up easily. Our untended, unhealed emo wounds disrupt the sweet fellowship that is meant to be, and it will definitely slow us down every time we have a temper flare up. We ourselves get discouraged by our emotional flare up and our temper outburst, we ourselves can drop out of the race. And not only just we ourselves, we can cause others to stumble and to trip and to cause them to drop out of our race. So, it is really important for us to address our emo wounds. First John 2.10 say, The person who keeps loving his brother remains in the light. And there is nothing in him that could make you trip. Is that true of you? So we need to heal every wound in our life that can trip our brother by bringing that wound up to the light of Christ. Don't foolishly just expect random healing all by ourselves. If Andrew and Jesus and uh, Sujen left Emma's wound to heal by itself, how well would it heal? Bring our issues and emo baggage to the Lord of life. He wants our journey to be easier. He says, come to me, all who are heavy and burdened. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is like. Identify what you need to heal emotionally. Work at your healing with support and help. Jason looks often in the garden. And he knows when the plants are infected with mealybugs and all kinds of uh, stuff. He doesn't expect them to heal by themselves. He will find all the way to help them heal. Okay, And he works on them. Sometimes literally picking off the bugs or sweeping off the bugs until the plants flourish. But in normal life, we are dumb enough to believe we will heal emotionally, left to our own. Okay, It is dangerous to presume and to assume that we can and have healed okay, from our emotional wounds. It's really sad to see the effect emotional wounds cause, especially on those nearest to us, our family. The many broken marriages, divorces, suicides, abuses is enough to show us that these happen because we walk in darkness and cause others to stumble. Today is 22nd August. It's a special and important date to me. Why? Today is exactly one year 
since my late father died. Okay, Ching Yi invited me and Mariah for a grief support course because all three of us lost a loved one recently. Initially, I turned down Ching Yi's invite. I thought I had healed quite well. I thought I'm okay. And also, I'm also very busy. But then I said, okay, I shall register for the course. But I was surprised by the grief support course. I found myself crying uncontrollably during the very first day. The many tears showed me actually I wasn't even aware I had not healed properly. The second week, I was asked to share on what I missed doing with my dad. Again, as I shared, the tears flowed. Oh, I'm still not healed. And again, the third week, I found that the videos that they showed, the questions that they asked, and the group therapy. It brings my wounds to the light. I am being healed. So bring your wounded heart to the Lord of Light. Ask Him to search your heart and to make you aware of wounds that still hurt. And surrender and bring up those wounds to the light. Let your heal wounds be a tool to push you forward in this journey to eternity and not something to hamper you. Often in the morning, I come downstairs to my hall. I see this beautiful play of light on my curtains. It's a picture of the intensity of the bright light contrasted against the disappearing dark shadows of the trees. It's a beautiful picture. And this beautiful picture reminds me of the verse in 1 John 2, 8, verse B. Part B, the new commandment is made manifest both in Christ and in you because the darkness is disappearing and the true light is already blazing. As I come near the end of my message, I like to merge both parts of the title. When we travel in the light, we allow Christ's flaming eyes to search the hidden part which is still hidden in the dark. Allow the bright light of his face to heal your wounded wounds so that there will be no flare-up, so that you will not stumble yourself and cause others to stumble. Coming back to the Mulu Pinnacle story, completing my journey. It took me and Jason five hours to reach the pinnacles. It took me seven hours to come down out of the jungle to base camp five. I wouldn't have made it if not for dot dot dot. Peter and Trixie gave me their good guide, Bundi. As we are going up and they are coming down, I had an accident and knocked my head. And Trixie quickly told Bundi, go take care, follow Chegu, take care of Chegu. Trixie knows that I had many issues. And Bundi was like to me on the way up and down. I actually don't know the path to walk. He shined his torch. He showed me where to pijat that is safe because he knows which part is dangerous. Okay, And on the way down, I was so exhausted. Every time I sat down to rest, I doze off. You know, it's very dangerous to doze off on the steep slopes because when you doze off, you fall off. You fall off, you cut yourself on a very sharp stone. Only let me sit down to rest because, you know, I cannot walk anymore. But he kept me awake by chatting to me. The minute my bum touched the rock, he talked to me. So similarly, completing our journey is not easy, especially after you have conquered some victory and you are tired and vulnerable. Like me, you can doze off and fall asleep and fall asleep some steep slope and cut yourself on some sharp stone. Be like Peter and Trixie. Sacrifice your comfortable guide or your comfort things to help another pilgrim in need in this journey towards our eternal home. My prayer is that when our time comes, we will be able to say, like the Apostle Paul to our Savior, in, in 2 Timothy 4 7, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, 
which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Travel light in the light. God bless you. Hearing Debbie's message reminds me of our Mount Kinabalu climb. A few of us learned the importance of travelling light when we realised that we had overpacked for our climb. We had to unload and hire a porter to help us carry our backpacks. In our spiritual walk, we need to unload baggage that could drag us, that could pull us down, that will hinder our uphill journey and also learn to cast our burdens upon the Lord as we did with the porter in the climb. It was very, very, very dark while we were ascending to the peak of Mount Kinabalu. We had to use our torchlight so that we do not fall down. The men in our group took very good care of us ladies. They shone on our path, they helped us, and they encouraged us. But there was a point in the climb where I found it so difficult to breathe due to the high altitude. At that point, the only one that I can rely on, that I can call upon, was the Lord. Traveling in the light involves fellowshipping with God and with men. It includes bringing the light of the gospel to those who are walking in darkness. Let's turn and fix our eyes upon the Lord Jesus as we travel light in the light. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. In the light of His glory and grace. Let's lift our hands to the Lord as I read to you the benediction from Numbers 6. The Lord bless you and keep you, protect you, sustain you, and guard you. The Lord make His face shine upon you with favour and be gracious to you, surrounding you with loving kindness. The Lord lift up His countenance, His face upon you with divine approval and give you peace. A tranquil heart and life. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. The announcements are coming right up and we look forward to see you again next Sunday. Shalom.